When it comes to colorizing your images on Inkscape, you can use things like gradients or just solid colors with a few shadows, glows and effects using the filters library. However, there is an easier way to get the effects you're looking for by using blend modes. Hello my friends, welcome back to another Inkscape tutorial. Rob here from Button Press Graphics and today I'm going to be running you through the basics of using the blend modes and then giving you a couple of examples on how you can use them. So without further ado, let's get started. Now as you can see on screen, I have just simply got a square with a standard linear gradient going from one corner to another and then some text layered over the top just saying using blend modes using just a standard black color now like i said in the intro you can of course open up your fill and stroke menu and add a gradient to this you can do this by coming down to this button where it says open fill and stroke giving that a click and it will bring up your fill and stroke menu you can then of course add a gradient to it just like this or you could even go to the trouble of adding a circle and adding shapes into the text or the shape that you want so you can get this kind of effect and they would look pretty good however one little mode that not many people seem to realize is even there is this the blend mode this allows you to use different color schemes and take different properties from the text or objects that you are wanting to color and use them to mix and blend other colors within them so for example, I am using a darker blue text on a light blue linear gradient background. Now by going to the blend mode, we will get all of these options. Now the one I like to use the most is overlay. Overlay is a really good way of overlaying your object as a transparent but full color image what i mean by this is if you was to get a clear colored film and put it over the top of whatever is underneath you can use the film like overlay to do this now it doesn't look like much has changed but if we was to take something like a square which is a dark blue and then we was to just drop this down one step as you can see when i come underneath it you can still see the letters over the top but that is because it is using what is underneath as the basis of what it is going to do as you can see in this bottom right corner where it is lighter it seems like it's more transparent and yet when it's up in the top left where it's darker you can see that it has much more saturation however if i was to take this text and move it away from the background you can see it is still a standard solid color this in essence is how the blend modes work for example, let's choose a different one. Let's go down to luminosity. So what this one is using is the lights and the darks of the background. As you can see in the top left corner, the text, when it's over the darker backgrounds, it is becoming lighter. But as you get further and further into the light areas of the background, it has become darker and darker 
and if I was to move up you can see it a lot more but again as you can see as I move off the canvas it is still a solid blue color now of course you can move and get the exact color you're looking for but when it comes to luminosity it is going to use blacks and whites so if you turn the text completely black it looks like nothing has changed yet if you put the color all the way up and then turn it to white as you can see it does exactly the same but in reverse and that is exactly how the blend modes work it takes into account what is in the background what your object or your text is layered over and then uses that to configure it in a much simpler way now as you can see on the screen i have created this graphic here all this is is a lot of wavy lines that i layered up and then circles over the top and then after i got all the shapes in place i used the shape builder tool to individually mark out every individual piece and then i went through and colored them going from lighter shades of a color to darker shades of a color and that is pretty much it now on this i'm going to use overlay now i'm just going to create some random rectangles that will go over the entire image in different colors and you can see exactly what each one will do now for an added little hint for you there is a way to use this image and create the exact dimensions that you want as you can see when i've selected this image it's got a width of 2000 and a height of 1414 now if i want to separate this into four different pieces i can just simply go to my squares and rectangles tool click from one corner of the image to the other and I've got snapping turned on to make sure that that's easy to do. And then I can simply go back to my select tool. And in this little value box, if I type slash two, and by slash, that means divide by two, it is going to divide the distance from here to here by two. So it will reduce the size in half. And because I've got this little padlock already selected, it will do the same to the height at the same time. So now that I've got slash two, as soon as I hit enter, it has now become one quarter of the size. And now I can just duplicate this by right clicking and selecting duplicate and move it across just like that and then do that another two times and we now have four different pieces covering the image underneath now it's just a simple case of changing the color to whatever colors we would like and i'm going to go with some bright colors and then go with some darker colors too something that looks like this now at the moment you cannot see the image behind it however by going to my blend mode in the fill and stroke menu and selecting overlay you now see the difference it has made and now as you can see the difference is huge we now have a completely different image to what we had when it comes to the color that was previously there and this can still be edited in any way that you want now do you remember this image from a previous tutorial this is an image that was made by ai online and it was just an image that i used to show you how to use the clipping and the masking well today i'm going to add something a little bit different i'm going to add a circle with my circle and ellipses tool and I'm just going to put it over the lamppost like so 
and then I'm going to add a blur to it because the blend modes will still take blurs into account as well. And let's change this to a much warmer color, like a deep orange, like this. Now, as you can see, of course, you cannot see the lantern through it, except for the top darker areas. But maybe you want this saturation. Now, of course, you could lower the opacity but then you wouldn't be getting the kind of look that you want unless you duplicate and then you build it up more and more. But as you can see with each iteration, it is getting lower and lower and you cannot see the lamppost through the colours. Well, this is why I like the blend modes so much. By coming down to the blend mode, again using my personal favourite of overlay, can you see what's happened? It has now taken all the values around it, but it has given a much more convincing glow, that pop of colour. And even if I was to increase the size, you can give a complete overlay to the entire image so like the light is casting that color in all directions if i was to take the overlay off it just looks like a gradient thrown over the top so this my friends is how you can use the blend modes in inkscape to make much more convincing illustrations if you found this useful then please let me know in the comments i always love to hear your feedback and also if you have any questions then you can leave them in the comments too or get in contact with me via email at buttonpressgraphics at gmail.com did you know that you can become a member of the button press graphics youtube channel well now you do you will get a lot of added benefits and you will directly support the channel enabling me to make much better content in the future. Also, you can send in your artwork into the creative corner. This is a regular section where I will showcase your work in a future video. But for now, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'm going to bid you all a fond farewell and I will see you next time.